Good evening. Thank you for coming to tonight's Politics, Law, and Economics lecture. My name is Derek Yonai, and I'm the Lundy Scholar of Business Philosophy here at Campbell University. The Politics, Law, and Economics lecture series is designed to highlight the three institutions which must work in concert to support and defend a free civil society. Those institutions are good governance, the rule of law, and free market institutions. Tonight's speaker is co-sponsored by the Lundy Chair of Business Philosophy and by the North Carolina History Project. And I'm going to turn the podium over to the director of the North Carolina History Project, Dr. Kibler. I do want to thank you for uh, being in attendance tonight and for taking the time on your schedules to be here. I'm looking forward to, to the lecture because I can tell you that Dr. Schweikart is an entertaining le lecturer, and I think you, uh, when you leave you won't be disappointed. Before I introduce Professor Schweikart, I'd like to take a minute to introduce to you the North Carolina History Project. On the table, as you walk into to the lecture hall, there is a brochure describing why the History Project was started, some of the programs of the History Project, offers and what the History Project hopes to accomplish. I want to alert you to uh, one feature of the History Project, and that is an online encyclopedia called NorthCarolinaHistory.org. And there are many, uh, some of the history professors here at Campbell have helped uh, make this uh, online encyclopedia a success. Professor Jim Martin, Professor Ronnie Faulkner, Lloyd Johnson, uh, Professor Roran Platt. Uh, these gentlemen have helped make, uh, as I said, uh, the online encyclopedia a, a success and it's received good reviews across the state and across the country. So I encourage you to pick up a brochure to learn more about the History Project on Encyclopedia and some of the lecture series uh, that we sponsor uh, here in Lewis Creek and Raleigh and, 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 and across the state. Well, without further delay, I'd like to introduce uh, to you Dr. Uh, Larry Schweikart. <coughs> Dr. Schweikart is a native Arizonian who attended Arizona State and received a BA in, in political science before going on the road as a drummer with a rock band for several years opening for major acts of the 60s and 70s. Returning to Arizona State, he received a master's in history, then received a PhD in history from the University of California at Santa Barbara. He has taught at the University of Dayton for 20 years, and that is where uh, he teaches now. His recent bestsellers, and two of them are out in the front if you are interested in buying them, are Patriots History of the United States and America's Victories, Why the U.S. Wins the Wars and Will Win the War on Terror. The former book attracted the attention of national talk show hosts, and uh, Dr. Schweikart has been uh, on the Rush Limbaugh show, the Michael Medved show, and among other uh, broadcasts as well. In August 2006, President Bush invited Dr. Schweikart to the Oval Office for a one-hour sit-down discussing history and mi mi military affairs. So without further delay, I'll, I would like to introduce Dr. Larry Schweikart. <laughs> Well, to show you that we didn't all start off as professors. I am the guy in the Jaws t-shirt over there. That was taken after we opened for Steppenwolf at uh, West Palm Beach Convention Center. We used to open for uh, Savoy Brown, James Gang, Steppenwolf, Mother's Finest, a bunch of other groups. And uh, of course I had my, my little drum set back then. Uh, we, we cut a couple of records and uh, had them reviewed by Bill, Billboard, Cashbox, Record World, and uh, a few other <coughs> places. But now, of course, I'm a, a writer. I got tired of the road. I tell my students that I know what communism is all about because we lived as good communists. We shared everything and had nothing. Uh, so uh, I am now an author, and um, as... Troy Kickler just said, uh, my most recent book is America's Victories, Why the U.S. Wins Wars. And th this was a mock-up of the title. Uh, it's an early one. It's wrong. It says, and can win the war on terror. And uh, in, my real title is, and will win the war on terror. And while I'm not going to talk about this book tonight, I'll be happy to deal with it in the question and answer later on. The paperback edition has some numbers that I think are, are really startling. We hear about uh, enemy uh, about our casualties over there, but we never hear a word about what's happening to the enemy. And uh, I think I've been the only one so far to really compile some of those numbers. Um, I'll also be happy to answer questions about rock and roll later. But for now, um, I'm going to discuss a couple of topics here. I have two different speeches, and I was talking to uh, Troy Kickler about these, and he said, well, can't you combine them? And so this is kind of a combination 
of two of my uh, favorite speeches, and they both deal with history, lessons of history for business and for economics. And uh, the first one is a positive lesson. What can we learn from history? The second one is more of a lesson like, um, what should we avoid? When do we see bad history? So let me start off with this. In the 1990s, this front page of Newsweek appeared, Corporate Killers. And it was um, uh, referring to CEOs who had uh, cut jobs. You see here, uh, Mr. Palmer cut 20,000 jobs. Albert Dunlop of Scott Paper cut 11,000 jobs. AT&T cut 40,000 jobs. And uh, predictably, the New York Times jumped on the bandwagon. On the battlefields of business, millions of casualties. Ah, if you lose your job, you haven't just lost a job, you're dead. You're a dead person. You have no life. I've got to tell you, I've lost plenty of jobs in my life, and I'm still here. But you see here, Delta will cut 15,000 jobs. AT&T's called 40,000 now. My favorite, Sears kills catalog. You can just envision some guy stalking into Sears with an AK-47. You're all going to die, and the poor catalog department is diving behind desks and so forth. Right. Defenders of the corporate system call this downsizing, and they pointed to the need for higher profits. Strictly speaking, they argued these people no longer delivered value. In fact, what was happening was that newer and more productive Businesses were cutting into the market share of these companies. Uh, MCI in the case of AT&T, Southwest Airlines in the case of Delta, and online direct internet purchases in the case of Sears Catalog. Competitors of AT&T added 178,000 jobs since 1978, or four times the number cut by AT&T. Consider just the changes in jobs over the last century. Now this is in 1992 when it says today, but you can see that there were um, 109,000 uh, carriage workers uh, back in 1900, and there are none today unless you go to a place like Knott's Berry Farm or Disneyland where they have a few uh, stagecoaches. Uh, there were uh, 74,000 telegraph operators in 1920, none today. 100,000 boilermakers, unless you go to Purdue University, you won't find one of them around today. 238,000 cobblers, 100,000 blacksmiths, none today. The point is, there are a lot of occupations that just don't even exist anymore. But if you go down to the bottom, creation, you'll see that, D, uh, there are 232,000 pilots and mechanics for airlines, none in 1900, because airplanes really didn't exist around 1900. Medical technicians, a whole new field. 1992, there were 1.3 million med techs. Totally new field. And on and on and on. You can see all of the jobs that have been created just since, in some cases, since the 1980s, didn't even exist before. And so as a result, 